Hello, I'm Sean Paul, and today we're going to talk about processing your Moringa tree, its leaves, into powder. But before we do that, we want to talk to you about a few things here. Um, one, I am a gentleman that wrote a book on aquaponics, on how to build aquaponics systems. Uh, in the description, we're going to put several links to videos that we produced in regards to aquaponics. So if you're interested in aquaponics, I would highly suggest that you would take the time to watch some videos that we produce on aquaponics. Now. Uh, we produce, or the video that we're going to show you, we produced this probably about 35 days ago. There's three things that we're going to show you at the end of this video. One, what does the Moringa tree look like today? You will be blown away on how fast this stuff grows. So we'll show you that. And then also we propagated two branches off the uh, old Moringa tree and now we're growing two more Moringa trees. And we want to show you the results of that as well. And then finally, what is this? Okay, some of you might know what this is, but you definitely want to stick around to find out what that is. That is absolutely amazing. We ordered that and purchased that uh, after we did that Moringa video, and this is absolutely an amazing device, which we're gonna talk about. So, uh, in the description will be the aquaponic videos, uh, as far as if you ever want to build an aquaponic system, if you have any interest in aquaponics. And then also, we're gonna put links in there on how to get Moringa seeds, how you can order your own Moringa seeds, and then also, where can you purchase this device as well? Because after I show you, you're definitely gonna wanna get one yourself. So, here we go. Hope you enjoy this video. Stay tuned, because we got a little bit more to show you after this video. And then this is my lovely wife of, of many years, Nancy. And we just want to talk to you guys about Moringa. Probably about three years ago, we started uh, a Moringa tree in our yard. Mm -hmm. And we got the seeds through Amazon. And as you can see, this thing is really super big. We've cut this thing back many, many, many times. Um, what's surprising is we just cut it back in April, and right now it's June. So that's just absolutely amazing to think that it has grown this much, and again, probably about three months. Right. And uh, as you can see, we've we've cut it, I don't know if you can see that, we've cut it many, many times, um, and we've harvested this many times over. But as you can see, the stalks or the, the branches on this is just absolutely huge this time. So every time we prune it, we're just getting more and more uh, branches. Mm -hmm. And it's coming out. And, and a greater harvest every time. So I just wanted to do a video with you guys today and just show you the process that we go through as far as to harvest the leaves, dry the leaves, and then we turn it into powder. My wife and I, we use it, um, you know, for many- it's a natural vitamin. Yeah, natural vitamin. Ways. She puts it in eggs when we cook. Uh, you know, we do smoothies, we put it in our smoothies. We just use it for just many, many different things. I know myself, when, we, when I actively use it on a consistent, constant basis, I can see a massive difference in my skin and so forth. And uh, so Man. we just really feel like there's a lot of benefits. Okay, so every time, every time we have harvested this, uh, I, we've gotten more and more branches every time we've harvested. So it just gets bushier and bushier. Now, please excuse my crude tools. This is all we have to harvest this. And what I like to do is cut everything in an angle. I don't like to cut it straight across. They say that it helps prevent uh, any type of disease forming on the tree. Now also, what we're noticing here, because we do um, harvest more and more every time, uh, we're enable, it's enabling us to actually share this Moringa with our friends as well. So it's really a great benefit. Um, so now I'm just going to go ahead and, and just trim away any of these smaller ones. I'm going to leave a couple in place because obviously those will be great starters uh, for them to grow up as well. But what's really neat is this will definitely 100% grow right back in, a, in about three or four months to the same height. Okay, so after you see the whole branch has been harvested off the main tree, you can just go ahead and take these, and some people can use pruning, but you don't have to, because it's not that strong of a branch that you can't just snip it like such. The, the pruning things just kind of get in the way for me, but I'm all about easy, so um, whatever's the easiest for you, 
you can do that. But in no time, you can see you have a group. To propagate the tree, you're able to cut it and actually plant it in the ground and it will regrow. Now, I've never done this before, so this is the first time I've ever done it. So we're gonna do two. We actually maybe just need one more tree, but we're gonna do two just in case one doesn't grow. And then for what I've read, all you have to do is angle it down. So make sure you cut your angles, angle it down, and then make sure it's over one inches thick. So it cannot be anything less than one inch. They say that it will have a hard time regrowing. And then make sure it's maybe about two foot long. Um, so then, you know, I dug a hole. I'm gonna plant them about 10 inches deep. And, uh, and then obviously we're gonna watch them. Now, the gentleman that grows these locally and he puts them in pill form, he sells them locally down here in Honduras. Um, he said that make sure that you watch uh, how moist the soil is because uh, they said, he said that you can actually rot the ends. Right now we're really dry, so I'm not really gonna concern, not really dry, but we're pretty dry. I'm not gonna really concern myself with it yet. I'm gonna water it just a little bit and then watch it from there. All right, so like I said, I'm putting about 10 inches deep. Uh, you know, we're, we're kind of keeping it as natural as possible, meaning the existing soil, not trying to add a bunch of additives or anything like that. And also we are kind of limited on what we can get here locally uh, in Honduras. So it's not just easy to run down the local store and uh, get things that you might be able to get in the United States. So, like I said, this is kind of an experiment for us on the actual propagation. Uh, we've never done it before, but we harvest plenty, plenty of times as far as the leaves in this, it, itself. So, harvested all the branches, so to speak, and now we got smaller branches with the leaves on them. What we do is we set up like a little station here, two tables that we have, and then this right here is a pan of water. We got two pans of water. One pan of water does have a little bit of bleach in it. I know that some people might not like that, and obviously we would encourage you to find a way to clean the leaves that would make you more comfortable. Uh, we're perfectly fine with it. And then uh, over here is another pan of water with just purified water, there's no bleach in it. So we do have a final rinse. We don't allow any like bleach residue to remain on the leaves. And then we, after we get done cleaning, we set everything on this side over here. And then we'll set up to start uh, hanging these up, these branches up uh, to dry. And we'll discuss that here in a minute. So as you can see, my wife is beginning to just, just lightly rinse. We're not, you know, we're not real concerned. Um, we don't have anything to really be concerned about as far as bugs and insects and so forth. Obviously, that's just added protein. <laughs> okay, what my wife's doing now is uh, after we've cleaned everything, you can see that we've taken from that pile to this pile, we cleaned everything. Now she's trying to shake out as much moisture as possible. Um, a lot of people try to uh, dry these out in the sun, but what happens is you reduce the nutrients of the Moringa by drying it out in the sun. Uh, but you don't want to dry it like in an enclosed room where there cannot be enough air to dry the leaves as quickly as possible because what will happen is you can have actual mold start growing on the leaves. So you do not want any moisture on them as much as possible. And then we have a really nice breezeway here. Um, it's kind of like an open breezeway. So what we do is we actually dry our clothes out here. We don't even have a dryer. Uh, so we dry our clothes out here. So what we're doing is we're taking a rubber band, tying around the ends, and then we are uh, hanging them up to dry. And uh, like I said, we've never had a problem in doing it this way in the past. Uh, we've never had any mold issues or anything like that. But they, uh, if you research this on the internet, everybody uh, cautions you on the way you dry it. Now I know that some use dehydrators, uh, or, yes, dehydrators, and then also some use their ovens and so forth, but uh, we just always kind of done it this way and it works out really great for us. All right, everybody, we are back. It's been about three to four days. Uh, as you can see, we still got some Moringa up here, hung, and uh, it is dry completely. It's very brittle. Um, as you can see, some of it's actually falling on the ground as well. So we are over here now preparing this to more or less pulverize it, I guess, to make it into powder. But uh, what we want to do first is obviously take it all off the stems 
And as you can see what my wife's doing, it's just extremely simple. You just take one stem each and just rake the leaves off of the stems into a bowl. Uh, don't be concerned if some of the stems go inside the bowl, it's not a big deal. Uh, when you blend it, they will just become powder as well and it's not gonna harm you. There's people that actually eats every portion of this tree uh, if you watch some other YouTube videos. So anyway, um, we will go ahead and come back to you after we go through all this pile here. Okay, now you can see that we got a lot done here. Um, these are the stems. Uh, we processed two bowls worth. And then obviously we got a little bit left on the table. Now my wife did kind of remind me, she said that we, you really don't want stems in there if you can avoid it. Um, I didn't realize that. I knew that we one year we blended them and she said it just makes it more difficult. So as you can see what she's doing, she's got a colander that's got big holes and then she's trying to process and remove some of the stems as much as possible. So as you can see in my bowl here, in her bowl here, she's got stems as well. It's unavoidable, but again, mm -hmm. using the colander can definitely help. Okay, as you can see, we got the cookie sheets full of Moringa. Uh, we're gonna put them in the oven. Uh, we're gonna set it at 200 degrees and put it in there for about 10 minutes. You don't wanna put it in there too long because you'll ruin the nutrients of the Moringa. Again, this is simply to try to kill some anything that may have grown on it while it was uh, drying and then maybe just to dry it a little bit further but it was pretty crispy so we're not real concerned about drying it any further okay i like after um our moringa has already been prepared and dried and it's already been broken down at best you've gotten out as much as the sticks as possible i like to take a measuring cup and just put it in there because i want to save as much as i possibly can Plus it, then it gives me, if I want to do a measurement of something later, I can say it was four cups or three cups. So there is four cups right there. And so, you know, it just depends on how, how fast you're and how powerful your blender is. <laughs> Okay, so after you blend it, uh, we want we tried the bigger colander and it was still a little bit too big. We still had some stems in there. So what we've done now is we're gonna try to use a smaller one that's a little bit finer. Because uh, you know you really don't want the big stems in there like you can see right now. So you want to get those out as much as possible. Okay, folks, this is the final product. Pretty exciting. As you can see, we got some nice, fine, beautiful green Moringa powder. Um, all we do is we just store it in a Ziploc bag. Uh, we never had any issues. We put this up in our cabinet with our spices. And, uh, you know, as my wife and I cook, we just kind of get some out. Three, you know, tablespoon here, tablespoon there. And uh, we put in smoothies, eggs, spaghettis, just anything and everything. Uh, we're real careful we don't try to get crazy to alter the taste of the food. Um, it's kind of rare that you'll even notice that there's moringa in the food. So anyway, this will last us probably probably about two to three months, right? Mm, I'd probably say six. Oh, okay, six months. Six. So See, the tree's just getting bushier and bushier, so we're getting a lot more every time that we uh, do this. So um, you'll find the same thing as you... As you uh, prune your tree, you're just going to get more and more leaves and a greater production. So that's a really, that's probably one of our best batches. Hopefully you got a lot of information on how to make powder out of your Moringa leaves. Now, what I wanted to show you before we go outside is what is this device right here? Well, actually what it is, is a capsule maker. Uh, you know, the Moringa powder is, is a great substance to put into your food, but sometimes it does alter the taste of your food. So I went online and figured out how to make my own Moringa capsules. So now I can take two or three of these uh, after every meal 
and get the proper nutrition and I don't have to alter the taste of my foods. So here's our original Moringa powder and then here's the capsules. You can order these online. Again, we give that description in the uh, YouTube description channel. And then also uh, with this device, we are able to make uh, 100 capsules at a time. It takes about 20 minutes to make your capsules. So. Uh, you know, it's not hard at all. You can make 100 capsules in 20 minutes. And so in, in one setting, I made 200 capsules. And then I take probably about two per meal. So now let's go outside and look at uh, the Moringa tree itself and the propagation. Okay, we are outside now. This is the tree that we cut on July 7th and today is August 15th. So again, roughly about 35 days. You will be blown away when you see that. Look how much that has grown in a 35 day period. So we got, we got probably about three pounds off of that process that we showed you. And now already probably within two to three months, this will be ready again. Now, obviously, you know, there's a lot of your friends that probably need Moringa. So you could actually just start giving Moringa powder away. And some of you might say, well, look, I'm kind of looking for a business to start. So yes, you could even start that as well. I know down here in Guatemala, there's a gentleman that I know that processes Moringa and then also he processes turmeric and other things as well and he makes capsules out of them and uh, he sells those in nutrition stores in the Guatemala area now this is the propagation um, I don't know if you can actually see it uh, let me see here here we go right there there's a little uh, teeny bud right there now again this has been about 35 days so it took about that much time for that little bud to grow you do have to understand that um, that you know these branches don't have a root system so they're it's going to take a little while but once it does get started you know the the tree is basically going to be the same size as this tree maybe in a couple years so uh, so basically we'll have three trees producing about three pounds every every uh, three months So just wanted to show you this one. This one took off a little bit faster than the other one Again, I don't know how well that's focused in but you have this little uh, branch developing right there as well so uh, it's really cool to see how the Moringa tree works. It, they call it the tree of life, and I can definitely see why they call it the tree of life. Well, again, thank you very much for watching our videos. Uh, again, if you're interested in aquaponics, we have some videos down there in the description for you. And uh, we do sell an ebook on how to build an aquaponics system. And you can always reach me at MorningstarAquaponics.com. You can ask me any questions. I'll be glad to answer any questions uh, that you might have. So you guys have an amazing day, and thanks a lot for watching our video.